Welcome. I hope you're blessed in the Lord today. In this video, we want to continue to talk about the seventh day Sabbath and how it relates to the Christian life and how it doesn't relate to the Christian life. Now, recently I was uh, uh, watching uh, R.L. Solberg over at the Defending the Biblical Roots of Christianity channel. I encourage you to go uh, add or go subscribe to that channel. It's got great stuff on the Hebraic Roots movement and then also issues related to Seventh day Adventism and, and other issues. But uh, whenever uh, he was sharing something recently about the Sabbath and it kind of sparked some uh, thinking in my mind and he didn't fully develop the argument, at least in the video that I saw, but I wanted to kind of go ahead and finish the argument that he started. And I want to show us how that relates to the idea of Christians not being under the seventh day Sabbath. Because now, if you're dealing with the Hebraic roots, then they will be more consistent and they will apply all the law. At least some of them will say all the law is enforced today and that we need to apply all of it. But those more in the Seventh-day Adventist camp or those that only just want to hold to uh, defy the Ten Commandments from the rest of the law and say the Ten Commandments are special and so you still have to keep the Seventh-day Sabbath, uh, they, will, uh, they will argue just for those and let all the rest of the law uh, you know, pass away. They have no problem saying that that's obsolete. We're no longer under that. So I, I want to go from that perspective. Those that hold to that view, I want to make this argument. Here in Hebrews chapter 10, we start in verse 1. For the law is a shadow of the good things to come and not the very image of those things. It could never by the same sacrifices which they offer continually year after year perfect those who draw near. So we see that the law is only a shadow. It's a type and a shadow, something pointing to the reality. Now we know from the book of Hebrews, he's just been talking about the, the tabernacle. He's talking about the sacrifice, talking about the high priest and saying that Jesus in the new covenant fulfills all of these things. And he goes on in verse 2. Otherwise, would they not have ceased to be offered since the worshipers once purified would no longer be conscious of sins? In other words, those sacrifices, those types and shadows could not fulfill the real purpose of washing away our sin. Otherwise, they would have stopped to be uh, offered. Verse 3, but in those sacrifices, there is an annual reminder of sins for it is impossible. It is not possible for the, bull, the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. In other words, the Old Testament sacrifices were not sufficient. And this is why we see the, the Day of Atonement year after year performed because it would stop being performed if the truly took away their sin, but it didn't take away their sin. So by performing year after year those sacrifices, they were saying that sin is not dealt with. That's what was happening when they were going only under the old covenant law. It was not sufficient to wash away their sins. And by practicing year after year, they're only reminding themselves, oh, I have not yet been cleansed of my sins because I need to make another sacrifice and another and another and another. Now let me note that the sacrifices that are made in the Old Covenant, even though in the, the Law of Moses there was given certain rules, uh, atonement, all these things, but sacrifices go all the way back to Cain and Abel. We see that Abel was offering sacrifices to the Lord, that he was offering of the, uh, the, the, his flock. He was offering them up to God. So this is an ancient practice. Uh, it was even around before the law of Moses. And we could even say that in Genesis chapter 3, after Adam and Eve had sinned and they were naked and they made fig leaves to cover themselves, that God himself made a sacrifice because he killed an animal and took the, uh, the skins from that animal to make clothing for them. So we could say that this is something that goes all the way back to the very beginning of creation, these offering of sacrifices. Now I say that because those that are in something like the Seventh-day Adventist camp or that make much of the Ten Commandments and separate it from the rest of the law and say we're still under the Ten Commandments, those that will make this argument, uh, they will acknowledge clearly or acknowledge freely that we're no longer obligated to do sacrifices. Recently I was talking with a, a guy in the Seventh-day Adventist camp and he, I, was, I was arguing and saying, look, we should keep the sacrifices. It goes all the way back to the time of Genesis. But then he says, no, no, we don't because Jesus fulfilled that. They're no longer obsolete because those things were only pointing to the reality that was in Jesus. And so when we have Jesus, we don't have to keep going back and doing the old sacrifice because Jesus takes care and washes away all of our sin. His sacrifice is perfect. It was once for all. We don't have to keep going back and offering sacrifice. Now, I was arguing for this because I know that the logic is the same if we turn it to the Sabbath. Uh, and whenever I turned it to the Sabbath, then his logic became very unclear. He began to bring up other things to change the subject because he couldn't deal with the ramifications of his own arguments. In other words, if 
The sacrifices that were around are no longer, we no longer need to practice them because Jesus fulfilled them. Then that goes the same for the Sabbath, if indeed Jesus fulfills the Sabbath. And if we flip over to Colossians chapter 2, we're going to read similar language that was in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 16. Therefore, let no one judge you in regard to food or drink or in respect of a holy day or new moon or Sabbath days. These are a shadow of things to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. So the fulfillment of those things in the old covenant that we saw that were just a shadow, including Sabbath days, and some will say, well, that's only certain Sabbath days on the festivals. It's Sabbath days, any Sabbath day. If you call it a Sabbath day, then that's what's being talked about here. That is a shadow that is pointing to Jesus Christ. The substance is in Jesus Christ. This is why in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, before getting into the argument and debate uh, about uh, teaching us about Sabbath day in chapter 12, Jesus says this, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So come to me and, find, and I will give you rest. He is our Sabbath rest. He is the substance which was pointed to from the shadows of the Old Testament Sabbath day. That just pointed to Jesus Christ. He is the fulfillment because in him we find rest. We find rest from the bondage of sin. We find rest from the bondage of being under uh, the, the judgment of God. We find rest in him. We find peace in him. No longer under the yoke of bondage of the old covenant law, but now we're under the easy and light yoke of Jesus Christ. He is our rest. And so if someone were to say, well, look, we, uh, yeah, Jesus fulfilled the Old Testament sacrifices, but we still need to keep them. We still need to go and offer bulls and blood, uh, you know, the uh, goats. We need to offer these things to cleanse us from sin. If I go and do that, then what I'm saying is that Jesus did not really fulfill those things. He is not enough. He is not the fulfillment of those things. And in the same way, if I say, well, look, but Genesis, in Genesis, not only did they have sacrifices, but it was Genesis chapter 2 that already had a Sabbath day that even God was celebrating the Sabbath day. And so we need to go back and we need to continue to practice that every seventh day. We need to rest six days work, seventh day rest. We need to do that because even though Jesus fulfilled it, even though he is our rest, we still need to go back and do that. By doing that, we'll say that Jesus has not really fulfilled the type and the shadow. He has not really fulfilled what was prophesied in the Old Testament. But if we want to honor and glorify Christ, we will say that Jesus Christ has indeed fulfilled all the sacrifices and that's why we don't need a temple system. We don't need to go offer sacrifices once a year reminding us that sin is not taken care of because sin has been taken care of in Jesus Christ. And we don't have to every week remind ourselves that, okay, yeah, I'm resting today, but tomorrow I'm going to work again. Tomorrow I'm going to be uh, laboring again. No, when we come to rest in Jesus Christ, we come to rest for good. As God rested from all his labors and he didn't start creating the world all over again in the same way when we rest from our labors we let rest from all of our works in Jesus Christ we stop uh, and turn away from sin we turn away from rebellion we turn away from condemnation we turn away from bondage to this world uh, to death all these things we turn away and we find rest in Jesus Christ and so if somebody says no no we still have to go back and keep the type in the shadow we still have to do that even though Jesus fulfilled it by doing that we're saying that he hasn't really fulfilled it now, this doesn't mean that people, if they wish to celebrate every seventh day, that they want to rest and they want to uh, remember and do that culturally or they want to do that as their own discipline and practice in their life. That's one thing. But if they say that, no, Christians are obligated to go and do that. Christians must work six days on the seventh day. That is Saturday. They must rest. Otherwise, they're in sin and rebellion to God. Somebody that takes that stance they are not recognizing Jesus as the fulfillment of that shadow, of that type. And they are not making him the substance and the reality. But instead, they're saying that, no, Jesus is not enough. Jesus is not enough. I must go back and do the type and the shadow. And that is just like somebody offering sacrifices, rejecting the blood of Christ. Then if we go back and say, Jesus is not our rest. He is not our salvation. Then, and we insist that people keep the type and the shadow. We are also rejecting him as our savior uh, and he is the one that is our rest. I hope this is helpful to you. God bless.